Hello guys, what's up? So this is me, Kurt Zeus, and for today's video lecture, I'll be discussing all about global economy. So there are a series of topics in this lesson. So first topic that I'll be discussing is we must now introduce what is economics as a discipline and how it would now affect our understanding in globalization because globalization basically affects one main aspect in the society, which is now economy. So what is economics? So in our first video, or rather the first introduction video, I have presented to you what is social sciences and we enumerated the different disciplines in social sciences, wherein we have political science, sociology, psychology, anthropology, and economics. Now for today, we'll have to define what is economics. So basically, dapat economics yun nakalagay dito na hindi economy, no? Okay, so to understand economics, we have to look it into its etymology. So we have to look it in its origin or origin of words. So it came from two Greek words wherein we have oikos and we have nomos. So oikos means household and we have nomos which means management. When we combine these two terms, it now means management of the household. Now looking into the definition of economics, management of the household, partially there is truth behind it because household is one main sector of the economy, of the market. We'll be looking into that later. Now a formal definition of economics is basically the study of production, distribution, trade, and consumption of goods and services. So we'll be looking into the cycle of goods and services uh, and also talking about how do they exchange these goods and services. And lastly, one theme of economics, it studies or it focuses on this societal institution called the market. Now to further understand economics, we have to look it into a diagram. So we have to look it into the two main sector of the market. So ito yung picture niya. So basically guys, ah, looking into the cycle, into my mouse, sorry. This is now basically the market wherein we now look into the exchange, the trade of goods and services. So the two main sectors of the economy would now be your household and firms. Or again, the two sectors of our market. So in yung so yung definition natin sa economics kanina di ba household management we have to look it into the household first so it all started started in the household ano nga ba meron sa household ang meron sa household natin guys will now be your raw material etong raw material is now the essential thing that would now stimulate our economy our market so dito natin siya matatagpuan yung raw material natin the appropriate term would now be economic production so nandiyan economic production or we have the abbreviation cell cell wherein we have capital entrepreneur land and labor so yung capital basically guys this is the money needed in order to start an economic activity or some would say yung capital is the money in order to start a business entrepreneur is basically the skills needed in order to manage a business or the skills needed in order to stimulate an economic activity then we have labor when we look into labor simply how we now generate those raw materials into something that is consumable labor kaya minsan yung pagsasaka in order to grow rice which is now we consume and lastly we have now land land is where we are now getting yung raw materials natin such as food and basically food diba agriculture sa natin nakukuha yung palay yung mga protas natin sa lupa but not just on food but anything from your raw materials including plastic sa nakukuha yung plastic sa rubber tree diba sa nakukuha yung mga kagamitan natin sa shelter sa ating bahay basically magagaling din yan sa lupa bato where do we get our accessories our gadgets basically it came from metal so magagaling din yan sa lupa so lahat yun, yung cell na yan is basically your raw material. And all of them are coming from your household. Now, coating or rather talking about raw material, these raw materials are yet not yet generated for consumption. So there are two things that we must remember in economics, production and consumption. Production is the start and the end would now be consumption. The end justifies the means, no? So yung household, wala siyang capability to generate those production into consumption or generate those raw materials into something that is consumable. Now, ang merong sector that would now convert those raw materials would now be your firms. Bakit? 
because they now have the technology. So, ang gagawin ng household, he will now give, or the household will now give your economic production, your raw materials to your firms. In able to convert the raw materials into final products or something that is consumable. But please take note, in economics, may tinatawag tayo na reciprocity. Anong ibig sabihin ng reciprocity? Ang ibig sabihin ng reciprocity is basically give and take. For instance, kung bibili ka ng candy, kailangan may bayad. That is reciprocity. That is a nature in human behavior or that is natural in human behavior. Kung sinapak ka, sapakin mo din, di ba? Kung hinalikan ka, sapakin mo din, di ba? That is reciprocity. So basically, yun yung nakikita natin no? yeah, when we talk about economics. So, ang gagawin ng household, ibibigay niyo yung economic production and in return, the firms will have to pay in return your household. And that is what we call now as your economic payment or we now call them as monetary payment wherein we have the abbreviation IPRW or IPWR. This abbreviation will now co-align with the following economic production or sell. So, pag capital, ang babalik sa iyo will now be interest. Yung interest now is the generated money of capital. Now, entrepreneur, pag nag-manage yung isang entrepreneur sa kanyang business, ang babalik sa kanya will now be profit. Kaya minsan na interchange natin yung interest at profit. Ang interest, basically, pag pera yung nagtatrabaho, ang babalik interest. Pag tao yung nagmamanage or nagbibusiness, ang babalik sa kanya would now be profit. So, I, interest, would be in terms of money. When, pers- uh, when people are involved, profit na yan. When it comes to land, we now call it as rent. We now call it as rent. Now, pag uh, labor ngayon, pag nagtrabaho ka, ang matatanggap mo would now be in terms of salary or wages. So, wages would be short term. So, nabigay na economic production sa firms at nabayaran nga ng firms yan. Now, yung firms na yan will now convert those production, those economic production slash raw materials into final product. Ang term natin sa final product would now be in terms of goods and services. Itong goods and services are now ready for consumption. Ito ngayon yung hinahanap ngayon ng tao. So, saan niya ibibigay yan? Siyempre sa household. And the household reciprocity have to pay it and now we term it as consumption expenditures. So, ito yung ekonomiya natin. Now, by the way guys, ang tawag natin dito is basically your resource market. Yung raw materials natin, resource market. Ang tawag natin dito sa baba would now be your product market. And this is basically your market. Now, to give you an example when it comes to global economy. So, for instance, we have household let us uh, use for instance labor so filipinos will now render labor into international firms or foreign firms to give an example would now be yung mga construction workers natin sa taiwan kasi madaming construction workers sa taiwan no? so mga construction workers they have now yung labor or rather they are now rendering labor they will now render labor to your construction firms na taiwanese yung may ave or in other instances, di ba? In terms of firms, di ba? We are now rendering dito sa, dito sa, or in terms dito sa product market natin, Filipinos are known for nursing services, no? Lalo na sa Israel at Middle East, no? And we are the top uh, exporters of nurses around the world, no? So we produce a lot of nurses and high quality nurses actually, no? So, well known tayo pagdating dyan, no? So, Filipino hospital firms or simply nurses, Filipino nurses will now render nursing services towards, for instance, Israel. So, may I rephrase it? So, Filipino nurses will now render services towards Israeli household. And in return, your Israeli household will now pay your, your Filipino nurses or Filipino nurses in terms of remittances. So, payroll yan, no? Even din dito. So, ganun umiikot yung ekonomiya natin in a global point of view. Yan, remittances. So, ganda, no? Okay. Now, aside from your basic cycle, sometimes we look your 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 market in a larger perspective. Kasi there are issues, for instance, sino magkocontrol nito? Kasi, for instance, ang, ang, ang context kasi nito is minsan magkagulo ang household and firms. Ngayon, dito napapasok yung dalawang players. 
So we're looking into a larger perspective wherein we have the third sector, which is now your government, and the fourth sector, which is now your rest of the world, or ROW. Now, paano to? Let's go first dito sa government. No? Okay. There's a need for an entity to regulate the market that is being dominated, not dominated, being interplayed by your household and firms. Kasi for instance, ang mangyayari dito is magkaroon ng, ng unfair, uh, unfair practices such as uh, unfair labor practices or unregulated prices and injustices among these two. Kaya kailangan may entity na mag-govern sa ating market. At ngayon, ito ngayon yung ating government. Now, ano ibig sabihin nito? No? So, may nagawang government in order to satisfy or rather reconcile the conflicts among your household and firms. Now, ganito nangyari. This is a little bit of a social contract. Now, the household and firms must now uh, recognize the need of an entity in order to provide the public the interest of the public. So, for instance, in terms of bridges, hospitals, schools, both entities, they wanted those things to exist, those, those things for the general will, pero hindi nila kayang i-provide because yung notion ng household and firms natin is for the interest of their own businesses. But they recognize those need. Kaya tendency is, they now decide to create this entity called your government. So, ang mayayari dyan, your household and firms will render some of their resources through tax or revenue to create now your government. Now, please take note, ha? when we talk about revenue, yan yung practice. Yung tax is basically the noun. Ngayon, nabuo ngayon yung government and the government will now provide expenditures for the interest of both the household and the firms. Ano ibig sabihin nitong government expenditures? Simply, ito yung mga government projects natin. For instance, bridges or roads. Household and firms, they need or recognize the, the, the importance of roads in order for the flow, for instance, of their products. Pero wala silang capability to fund or basically yung nag in pa rin yung, yung self-interest nila or yung interest nila when it comes to their businesses or their own interests. Kaya tendency, ang gagawa niyan would now be your government. Sino magpapahod ng security? Who will now provide security? It would now be government. So government expenditures yan. So meron tayong militaries, meron tayong police personnel, public schooling, public health. It would now be in terms of the government. So the government will now satisfy the things that the household and firms wanted in pursuit of the general welfare or the promotion of the general welfare of the common good. Yan yung task niyo ng government. Then another sector would now be in terms of the rest of the world. Now, household, firms, and government. Imagine this is the Philippine scenario setting. So this is the Philippine market. Now, tendency we have to exceed from our market in the sense na we are abundant in terms of supplies or we have or we experience shortage in terms of supplies. So, we need to connect our markets and this is where now global economy comes in. So, for instance, we lack food. For instance, nagkaroon ng shortage ng, ng papay ito sa Pilipinas. So, we now ask for other countries in order to supply yung shortage natin sa papaya. So, ang mangyayari dito is, we will now connect to the rest of the world. Our markets will now connect to other countries. Now, ganito. Kunyari, firms, no? We are abundant, for instance, of bananas. And Chinese household or Chinese families wanted bananas. So, mangyayari dyan is, since we are abundant, comparative advantage, we are now giving a portion of our abundant supplies to China. So, pag lumabas yung product natin, ang tawag natin dyan will now be exports. Dadaan yan sa world market. Then, pagdating sa Chinese household, ang tawag ngayon natin dyan will now be imports. And same din sa atin. Ano ba kulang sa atin? Kunyari, uh, nagkawin ng short age sa corn beef or sa meatloaf. We wanted spam, for instance. So, American firms will now export spam. Pagdating sa atin, import. And remember, reciprocity, we have now to pay yung products na yan in terms of payment. 
So import payment, kita ngayon dyan yung mga foreign firms. And that is how your world market works. So I hope medyo nagets natin. No? So this is just a basic when it comes to global economy. So four sectors, government, household, firms, and the rest of the world. Now there's a fifth sector with an asterisk because this fifth sector also work as a firm. Actually, firm talaga siya. No? The role of banks in your economy. Now ganito yan. No? So we have your market. So your 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 product market then we also have your your resource market sorry then we also have your your product market now tendency is that in economics one principle is that every resources should keep on moving and one main resource in your economy would now be in terms of money so economics actually doesn't encourage individuals to save their money kasi may umaasang isang sector to give an example, if we stop the movement of money tendency, we are actually letting one sector lose its existence. No, if that is the appropriate term. No, to give an example, yung sa COVID crisis, kasi no, uh, although we have our own opinions, I have my own opinions, but just look in the point of view of Ched. No, if we stop schools, tendency is that madaming maluluging sectors, madaming mawawalan ng trabaho. So, kailangan patuloy-tuloy yung, yung paggalaw ng pera, pag, not just not just on in terms of money, yung paggalaw ng resources natin. Kasi pag once nag-stop yung, yung school natin, walang trabaho yung mga teachers. But in the same time, madaming sectors ang apektado. We're killing another sector in the economy at it has drastic effects towards our economy. So, dapat keep on moving yan. No? Now, ganun yung mga bangko. No? So, instead of keeping your money and not spending it, and tendency some sectors would be dying because of it, you will now save your money in an institution called your banks. So, mangyayari dyan, you will now save your money kasi yun yung notion ng tao eh. Kasi there are two aspects. No? An individual point of view, you will now recognize the context of shortage. There will be some time in my life na magkakawin ng shortage or magkakawin ng shortage in terms of resources. So, ang gagawin ko is I will now set a portion of my savings, of my resources, of my money in case in case na biglang nagkaroon ng crisis sa ating buhay, financial crisis, tendency may pera ako na pwede kong gasusin. So, yun yung mindset ng isang individual. And we could not, and we could not um, hindi natin pwedeng baliwalain. And that is human nature. We need to save because we are now, uh, we are aware that sometime that, that magkakaroon ng crisis sa ating buhay. No? But also, in a larger perspective, from your individual point of view, from a macro perspective, you need to spend money in order for businesses to, to grow, to accumulate. So, ito nga yung papasok yung leeway ng banko. In order to bridge way yung human nature of saving because they are aware of shortages and as well for the need of the economy to keep on moving. So, yun yung purpose ng ating banks. So, we have that saving behavior. We will now save our money towards our banks, towards the banks. At ang gagawin ngayon ng banko is that sa mga nangangailangan ng pera, sa mga nangangailangan ng capital, ipapautang niya yan. Through now what we call now as your loans and mortgage. So for instance, you're now saving and other people needed funds in order for their businesses or rather firms to keep on moving. Yan yung role ng banks. And in return, yung mga companies, businesses na nga ngay, na kumita when they generated interest, capital, and profit, ang mangyayari dyan is they have to pay your banks in terms of interest. Then yung banks will now keep a portion of that interest and they will also give a portion of those accumulated interest value going back to those who are now saving. Who, who are saving. So, yan yung role ng banko. So, basically, vine-regulate niya yung value, yung pera sa ating ekonomiya. And later in your, in our lesson on global economy, ang mangyayari dito is that we recognize that some countries are abundant when it comes to resources. So, they have a lot of savings. And many countries wanted to develop their countries pero walang pondo. Kaya dito napapasok, for instance, yung IMF, yung World Bank natin. Sila ngayon yung magpapautang at kailangan natin bayaran yan in order for the global economy to work. So, I hope medyo nagets no kahit magulo yung example ko. Now, yung role ng government in your economy, kasi looking into the 
to the second diagram, we have the government. The government has a huge role actually when it comes to the economy. And this has something to do later with when we discuss already succeeding lessons in global economy. So the role of the government, we have three roles and this is embedded or reflected through policies. So first, when it comes to fiscal policy, the role of taxes. So basically, ang involved na sector dyan would now be the government and your market. So yan yung taxes natin. No? And later, makikita natin sa lessons natin sa global economy that taxes later will now be diminished. Kasi yan yung gusto ng ating mga TNCs, transnational companies, and your MNCs, multinational companies. We'll look further on that later. Then later, we'll be also looking in terms of monetary policy. So ang role din ng government is to regulate money and prices. So we have government, markets, and banks. Now, this is also an issue when it comes to global economy. Bakit? We have this feature. If you remember yung una nating lesson, liberalization, di ba? Liberalism. That we wanted now uh, an openness towards our borders. And some of the companies wanted that. Hindi na government yung magkocontrol ng money at presyo. So may issue dyan. We will look into that sooner or later. Then lastly, we have trade policy. One role of the government is to control trade and tariff. So tendency is that we have the government, by the way, the involved dyan would now be the government, the market, and the rest of the world. So the current feature or trend in globalization is a thing called liberalization. So gusto nila alisin do yung tariff. So yun yung nagiging issue natin sooner or later when we look into globalization or global economy. So I hope guys, medyo malino. So thank you. So thank you. <laughs> so thank you.